and welcome once again to the Movies and Stuff show. My name is Dan, and with me, my co-host, Abe. Abe, did you know that Clue is celebrating 30 years? 30 years? I had no idea. Makes you feel old. Very old. You know, I gotta tell you, man, like, Clue was regularly featured on my old VHS player when I was younger. You know, I say that a lot about the movies that we talk about because, again, these are about movies that I love. So, of course, they were playing regularly when I was younger. I think me and my siblings sang I Am the Singing Telegram thousands of times. Just thousands of times. Always got a kick out of that scene. Just love this movie to death. It was funny when I was a kid. I keep going back to it. I find it funnier and funnier every rewatch. What about you, Abe? When you first saw it, what did you think? Oh, I loved it too. It's funny for kids and it's funny for adults. Uh, I don't think a lot of kids always pick up on the whip smart humor in, in the dialogue. I don't know. This is me. But uh, <laughs> I loved it as a kid. And I saw it as a tender, at a particularly tender age. And I will say, Yvette left a impression on me that I, I still feel to this day. <laughs> well, well, you know, she showed up in the audition dressed in that French maid outfit and that pretty much sealed the deal for that's the life of a producer right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I do think it works. It works well as it is not a kid's movie, but it works well. Kids will find it funny, but yes. as you get older, you find all those hidden jokes and double entendres and, and just the man, the, the dialogue is so good like it is it's timed so perfectly I, I i can't think of many movies where the it just works so well between all of the characters and there's great great actors in this movie and i know that that helps but sometimes it's lightning fast sometimes it's the the joke kind of sits there and then you get it four minutes later and you're like oh god you know um of course, the, you know, this movie is based off of a board game by the same name. And, you know, we played it often in the house. It's 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 definitely the best board game movie. What's it got to compete with? It's not, it's not saying much, actually. Uh, competition would be from 2000 Dungeons & Dragons. Okay. If you even consider that a board game. It's kind of something totally different. But anyway, we'll count that. Battleship from 2012. <laughs> Yeah, that's out there, yeah. You got Ouija from uh, 2014. And I guess you can count the uh, Witchboard movies from the 80s. Similar. Yeah. You got Candyland, the animated film. That's a thing? Apparently so. Huh. Um, okay, I guess that's about it. But <laughs> you'd have to really say Clue is the best board game movie. But honestly, it's just it's a comedy whodunit. It takes place in this giant mansion. There's murders, and by the end of it, you find out who the killer or killers are, what rooms they did it in, and what weapons they used. It's pretty fucking brilliant, actually. Yeah, um, taking that vague parameters of making Clue into a board game, they nailed it. Wow, they actually came up with a good, an engaging story. I'm with you. You know, and, and I, I really I actually enjoyed the board game. I used to play that when I was younger. Did you, did you play uh, Clue at all? Oh, yeah, I played Clue. I mean, you got like 80 like brothers and sisters, so you had to have played Clue. 80, yep. Yep, we played Clue. <laughs> you know, I, it's just a, it was a fun game. I really, really enjoyed it, and seeing it as a kid, it's like, oh, this is my board game made into a movie. That's neat. I get to find out, you know, who killed Mr. Body. Who did it? Who did it? <laughs> This, you know, this movie has a really interesting history to it as well, because it was a John Landis film, and he wanted to direct it. He came up with the story idea. He brought in a bunch of writers, including Tom Stoppard. Tom Stoppard to work on Clue. <laughs> was brought in to write a screenplay for Clue, worked on it for a year, couldn't figure it out, sent his check back. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Eventually it ends up in Jonathan Lynn's hands to write it. And he actually ended up directing it. So pretty interesting that, you know, 
Landis, because of some of the issues that he was going through at the time, uh, couldn't direct the movie. So it ended up in Jonathan Lynn's hands the first time he's directed a film. And you know, I think he did a damn good job. No, he did. He did. I'm not going to say, I'm not gonna say Clue is a, you know, a visual feast, but no, he it, it, it works. He frames it so well with all those different people. Yeah, he's a good director. I think that's the toughest thing, though, is, and, uh, you know, I, I want to see if we can get into that with him, is there's not one main character. There's not two main characters. There's several main characters that you need to keep a focus in pretty much throughout most of the movie. Until they get split up and they start searching around the house, they're all in the same room together. And they're all playing off of each other. And you got to make sure that one is, is doing what you need that person to do. That's tough. That is. That's I, a lot I commend points. him for that. A yeah. lot. And, of course, he went on to direct uh, another one of my favorite films, and that's uh, My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> of course, that's one of your favorites. <laughs> of course. It, it reminds me, it's so funny, is uh, my buddy Mike had tweeted something. He'd saw, like, uh, something at his local Target in New Jersey, and it said Utes, you know, the, the college Utes, you know? Yes. But I, I joked. I was like, well, maybe it was a sign I meant to say youths. <laughs> is that really a thing in Jersey? Sidetrack real quick. Is it, do they really say youths? I've never, just, I've never heard that okay. before. But, uh, you know, Pesci's from Jersey. And that's how he said it. And that's how it ended up in the movie. So I've never heard it before. But uh, i got to admit, I'm not like... I'm not from South Jersey. I'm not from the Jersey Shore Shore area. The part of the Jersey Shore that I'm from is like North Jersey. Honestly, the part of Jersey that I'm from shares a bay with New York City. That's how far north <laughs> okay. in Jersey that I'm from. Okay. Uh, but South Jersey, it's a whole different breed. I don't even, like. I don't venture in those parts very often. I got gotcha. you. I tell you, man. Like, without getting into it, New Jersey has like so many different areas that. Really, I mean, there's there's some scary woodlands areas, the Pine Barren areas. There's, like, the super rich north, you know, west areas. Uh, there's the urban areas. There's the Jersey Shore, you know. A, a lot, like, a lot of South Jersey, too, is, like, very close to almost, like, Pennsylvania type or Philadelphia. And then you got the, you know, Hudson County area, which is a little bit more of the Italian, you know. <laughs> A little bit more than yeah. that. So it's 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 for a small state, there's a lot of people here and there's a lot of different regions to it. And so it's it's that's what makes it kind of so remarkable from my opinion. And it's it's one of the most uh you know, inter- like I've traveled the world and it's funny enough, is Jersey's still one of the most interesting places I've ever been to because <laughs> it's just so damn uh crazy. But back on point, uh he did direct My Cousin Vinny, which which I absolutely love. And I don't know. I, th- I think uh, I think he's a fun, just overall good writer. And he's, he did some stuff before Clue as well. And that's how he, he got involved with doing it. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of his stuff, you know, outside of Clue, some of the uh, British uh, shows that he worked on. I have. They're, they're funny. He's a funny fucking guy. Yeah, I have not, so I'm doing, I'm going to defer to you on that. And I think one of the things that Clue is known for is for having the multiple endings, and yes. it's, it's been replicated. Wayne's World even spoofed it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like super mega happy ending. Exactly. Um, you know, I think it, I think it's hard to say. What's your favorite ending? I'm trying to think oh. of my favorite one. What's your favorite? Oh, it's got to be the last ending. Where they all did it. Yeah, I think so. I think it's got to be. Yeah. Because it works so well and he did and gets tied up all perfectly, you know, together. It does. And I didn't even realize until years later after seeing it that it actually split it up for the theaters. Oh, I thought geez, I just yeah. as, I just assumed it was all like that. You know, when I was a kid watching it on VHS. I, I can't like when I found that out, I couldn't believe it. And it really was just such a dumb marketing campaign because, you know, eventually this movie became a cult classic. 
And it was a very heavily rented movie. But when it came out on VHS, they showed all three endings. Yes. But in the theaters, they split them up. So you'd go to theater A, you get one ending, go to theater B, you might get that same ending or you might get a different ending. This is such a a weird uh, campaign. Such a bad marketing idea. Not good, man. And, you know, with a cast of like Tim Curry, Madeline Kahn, uh, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKean, you know, it's it's it should have been a bigger movie. So it's it's hard to say if that that was the reason for it, but because that it's it's a very loved cult classic nowadays, you would think that you know there's definitely something there, and that marketing campaign definitely screwed kind of the you know the box office for that. Well, movie. yeah, marketing people are all idiots to begin with. A marketing a marketing person approaches any product as something is wrong with it. They don't ever say, "Oh, this is good." They look at the flaws and, "Okay, how can we how can we convince the most people to see it or or, or experience it?" Right. Marketing people are morons. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite character in the movie? I'm going to sound basic here. It's it's Wadsworth. Wadsworth, I think, steals the show. That's great. Yeah, he's manic energy, and his lines are just killer. You know, and I I'm always I've always been a huge Tim Curry fan, and it's. You know, I'm, I was glad to see him out and about recently. Uh, it's a shame that he had that massive stroke, and it's it's kind of uh, you know impacted him so much. Um, but you know, he had a great career. He's had he's had a uh, you know, it's definitely too short. He probably could have done a lot more. And uh, well, actually, we're actually going to be talking about another movie that Tim Curry kind of. Uh, he has a smaller role in it, but kind of steals the show in it. In a few weeks, we're going to be talking about The Shadow, and. He was great in that too, but uh, Wadsworth is awesome. Um, I love Mr. Green. Really, I love Mr. Green in it. And one of my favorite uh, elements to Mr. Green is you know throughout the whole movie he's being hinted at as being gay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then in the ending, I'm going home to sleep with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great ending. You know, it, it's it's. It's fantastic. What about you? Any particular scene or line that you just absolutely love? I like the uh, the part where Mrs. White's talking to everybody, and she says that her husband had threatened to kill kill me in public. <laughs> Scarlet says, "Why would he want to kill you in public?" And Wadsworth <laughs> says, "I think she, I think she meant he threatened in public to kill her." That's that's gold. That's just. <laughs> it's really really fantastic writing, as I mentioned earlier. It just. <laughs> Smart, smart and funny, yeah. and and like even like the at the end where they're counting the bullets, you know, the two plus one <laughs> plus one plus two, <laughs> like that whole thing is just insanely good, and the characters just really play off each other so well, and there's there's not a weak performance in it, and it's funny too is the guy that they got to play uh, Mr. Body is a musician, and his really? name is Lee Ving. Like le- leaving. Yes. So there's a joke in the movie. Mr. Body will be leaving soon. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> but that was in the original script because, I mean, Jonathan Lynn was very, very just had to stay with the script. You know, he did not allow a lot of improv. The only thing that was really improv, and it's, it's, it's hilarious, is when... Flames? <laughs> Flames? <laughs> she was brilliant. Yeah. Great. Absolutely great. Uh, anything else? Anything else on Clue? You know, I can't think of anything. I would think we hit it all. I, it's just such a fun movie. And you, as you said, the timing is amazing in that movie. I don't think we see timing like that a whole lot these days, especially with so. comedy. Right. Yeah. I mean, what we get with comedy is plant the camera, let them improv for 20 minutes. And see what happens. Yeah, it's it, the planning and the timing is is kind of a lost art. You know what? It o- almost reminds me of too. And it's not like the movies are very similar, but just you know, when, when I studied um, some kind of film in college, I'm, I'm not going to say that I studied film in college, but I did take you know film classes and things like that. Right. Is they talked about how perfect of a script The Big Lebowski is, and how. Uh, actors would try to go and improv stuff, and the Coens were like, no, 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 no. go back and do what's in the script. <laughs> I like it. 
and that the the actual movie is very very faithful to the actual script and that's what it kind of reminds me of is he had a vision you know Jonathan Lynn had a vision here he had the words he knew they were going to be funny he got the right people he was able to cast the movie exactly how he wanted and it just works we're going to chat about this movie with him so hang on for a few we'll be right back <laughs> 